Well, someone who knows all too well what it's like to have a near-death experience is the former footballer Toby Larby. Toby was 19 when he suffered a fatal collapse in 2013, where it was revealed that his heart stopped beating for a period of five minutes. He was advised to stop playing professional football after further tests and after a second collapse was di diagnosed with a mild case of HCM. He's since gone on to set up the Heart for More Foundation, an organisation that raises awareness of cardiac-related issues. And I'm pleased to say that Toby joins me live from London. Toby, thank you very much for coming on to uh, Beyond the Game. Now, with the untimely death of Czech Teote on Monday, uh, Igor Ekiog passing away in April, and Fabrice Mwamba suffering a cardiac arrest in uh, 2012. Can you just shed some light on the link between black African footballer, footballers and heart-related conditions? I think it's a, um, it's a question that's been asked a lot of recent, and um, there is a clear link between um, black athletes and cardiac-related issues. There's actually a statistic that says black athletes are eight times more likely to suffer um, from a cardiac arrest than, than white athletes. And this is down to a number of issues um, which are generally underlying. But there is a, um, something called apolipoprotein E, and it's found in 5 to 12 um, percent of Africans, and mostly only in Africans. And it's very, very rare to find this um, apolipoprotein E in somebody that's not of African heritage. And it's something that um, makes us more prone to, to, to suffering from a cardiac arrest. OK, and I know you do a lot of work with the Premier League. Uh, uh, do other leagues around the world know about this, well, the stat that you've just given? Well, from our research, um, the Premier League are obviously the first to, to work with us. Um, in the world to, to run these cardiac awareness programs for their youth teams. Um, but from our research, um, there, there isn't a, a football league that provides the education on, on how to look after your heart, on signs and symptoms to look out for, which is very, very important. And we say it's equally as important as screening athletes because for myself, um, I actually experienced every single symptom that you can um, whilst I was in my um, adolescent years. But because I had no education, I was unaware um, and I was unable to highlight this to a member of our coaching staff at the time. Well, can you just you know, describe the ordeal that you had to go through? I mean, you went through the same thing. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I, I experienced a number of, of symptoms which are dizziness, fainting, blacking out, chest pains and palpitations. And on this day, um, it was October the 15th, 2013, I was actually 19 years old at the time. Um, it was about 15 minutes into the game and I, again, felt the symptoms that I aforementioned. And um, I, had a, I had a heart attack on the pitch. Um, thankfully, I was able to be resuscitated. I was rushed to hospital. There were a number of tests performed on me during a four-week period and the doctors, as you mentioned, um, advised that I stop playing football professionally. Um, so it was an ordeal that was very, very difficult for me to, to take in terms of uh, finding out that I had this condition, but also um, understanding that I had to retire from, from a game that I devoted my whole life to, to, um, to playing. And how did that feel, knowing that you had to give up the one thing that you loved? I mean, at, at, at the time, understandably, for, for anybody, if you, if you dedicate your life to something and it's snatched away from you at the moment that you achieve the pinnacle of what people class as success, um, which for me was becoming a professional player, it was very, very difficult to take. But you, you have to weigh up you know, a profession versus life, and I still had life. So for me, um, there was a silver lining, uh, which is obviously why I set up the, the foundation, and now we do the work that we do with the, with the Premier League and the PFA. And you're doing great work there. Um, but moving forward, can you actually see sports science going down the route of personalised medicine based on a player's heritage, heritage and DNA? Yeah, 100%. I think um, the conversation has actually started around tailoring um, player performance around their DNA. I think it was about six years ago. I remember when I was still playing, it was in the preliminary stages of conversation. And what you'll see in the next um, few years is um, something they call DNA fit. It will come in different names and different branding, but they're looking at targeting um, workouts, targeting routines to a player's DNA, how their DNA copes with various um, levels of exercise. 
Um, so it is definitely something that will be brought into the game. OK, well, um, if a sports person gets screened and diagnosed, will it actually reduce their life expectancy or is it just about, you know, managing the condition? I think you, you have to understand that a, a, a heart condition isn't a damning condition. It's not a terminal condition. Um, a heart condition just um, alerts, finding out you have a heart condition, sorry, alerts you that you have something to be mindful of. So it doesn't decrease life expectancy. It just means that you have to live um, a managed lifestyle. So for myself, and I have a pacemaker, which allows me to still go to the gym, I'm still able to exercise, I'm still able to go on light, slow jogs, but anything that goes into the peak exertion levels of um, playing football and competing at a professional level, that's where you get into dangerous territory. So knowing you have a heart condition just allows you to manage your lifestyle um, in a safe way. OK, well, looking at the business side of football, um, if this condition is common uh, with black African footballers, can you see it affecting you know, the business and the transfers, for example? It's a, it's a, I, think, I think it'd be very crude to, to openly um, state that it would affect those dealings. I don't think it will. I think that there is a high level of testing involved in um, medicals, um, as aforementioned by the guy that was on, on before me. Um, and I do think the things are in place to, to eliminate um, these instances. I do think a lot more can be done. I think the correct testing can be done at lower levels. Um, I think the education is very, very key, as I mentioned previously. I think when you put all of these things into the mix, it does help to reduce the risk associated with, with sudden cardiac death. But I wouldn't go as far as to say that it would affect the business side of football in terms of signing um, black and African players. OK, Toby, thank you so much for coming on to be on the game.